Hello, North Country soccer fans, and welcome to the George Brenler Field for this big, huge MVAC matchup tonight between the Lions of Elizabethtown Lewis and the Eagles of Shazy. It is the 5th of October 2010 and there's a lot riding on this game tonight. Shazy comes into this game with a 9-0 record and Elizabethtown Lewis comes into this game with an 8-1 record. The only loss is to these Lady Eagles here when the Lady Eagles went down to the um, Lions Den in Elizabethtown and Shazy came out on that top of that game 2 to nothing. So it should be a very interesting Interesting, the good game tonight. Um, I'm Joey Trombley. I'll be calling the action tonight. On the camera is the father of hometown cable, Calvin Castine, on the camera, and we'll be bringing you the action here at the George Brenler Field. The crowd is starting to come in here, Calvin, and this is going to find I think will be a really good game tonight. And a very pleasant e evening here. Beautiful, beautiful fall colors and a very nice, you know, pleasant temperature, 70 degrees or so. A nice uh, feed by Kempadin, and the goalie uh, Ashline came right up. And we had that deluge of rain the other day where it poured for two days. And um, they canceled a couple games, as you well know, because you were planning on coming to film. And uh, they canceled those games, keep the players off, and the field looks like the best I've seen it all looks season. Looks like a carpet. <laughs> looks like a carpet. Somebody must have been out here mowing. It is in, in incredible shape. Uh, the goalie boxes are... Uh, it's kind of muddy now, but it's not mud. It's just dry dirt out there. So uh, some pressure here by the Eagles. So they're playing in ideal conditions. It's a beautiful night for a soccer game, as Calvin said. It's very pleasant. It's probably around the 60-degree mark. Uh, the flag is not moving. There is no wind or very light wind here at the George Brenler Field. And they're turning the lights on now, and the Shazy gets the call. So we have a restart, or actually, no, they don't get the call. So it's a restart here for the Lions. And uh, Calvin, our officials for tonight's game is, or are. <laughs> we have Dennis LaBarge over on the far side, and over here is uh, Jim Schutz. The legendary Jim Schutz. Yeah, that's what he says, yeah. He, well, I mean, he is a, a big uh, influence L at Northern Adirondack for many years, if I'm correct, as a coach. Yeah, yeah. And he's been officiating for quite a few years, too, I think. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, taught uh, phys ed in the elementary school, and uh, I was just telling him that uh, recently put up on our internet sites the uh, game from May of 1990 when Jim was coaching the, uh, the Bobcats there at Northeastern, and uh, Steve Perrier was one of the, if not the finest all-around athlete ever to come out of this area, uh, all-around baseball player. Uh, Steve Perrier was pitching, and his... Relief pitcher was a fellow named Lee Gibson. Lee Gibson. This one happened to be the Lee Gibson that just won some major music awards down in Nashville, Tennessee, isn't it? One and the same, yeah. So, so Lee Gibson, multi-talented Lee Gibson. <laughs> yeah. So when he came in for relief, did he win that game? Oh, yeah, it was a shutout. Uh, NAC won 8 nothing. So Lee Gibson was the Rivera of his time. Yeah, he's, but it wasn't a save because <laughs> they already had the eight-run lead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we're back to the action here. We'll call a little bit of soccer now as we got our pleasantries out of the way. And there's an opportunity for the Lions and a nice job by Took to come off the line to get there. Now, I will say this, Calvin, calling the game, having black letters on dark green shirts, it makes it a little tougher <laughs> to see the numbers out there. And we'll try to do our best to give justice to the Elizabethtown Lewis players. But the players on this side of the field will do a much better job yeah. than across the way. Now, I'm sure for the referees, it's very visible. But the further back you get, the harder it is to see those numbers. It, it Yeah, it is at least up here. I'm, I'm uh, you know, on TV, they, people can see the, the action going on, but I'm glad I'm not calling this on the radio because I'd have no idea You'd be who's... making up names. Oh, I would be making up names. Yes, I would. Well, you'd, you'd have to figure out who's playing in what position and assume that that's the person who's kicking the ball. Yeah, you'd have to do a little bit more work on that. And here's an opportunity for the Eagles, or, or yes, and a nice play by Ashline to get there ahead of Emily Lapierre. So some nice pressure here by the Eagles, and the ball uh, deflects off of Alexis Gay. And it's pushed back into the Shazy territory. And, and I always call her the dominator back there. Megan Reynolds does a nice job in the sweeper position. And one thing that with the uh, listening audience and viewer audience watching this, this game so far, Shazy has not given up a game all year, which is pretty goal, impressive. I, or I'm sorry, a yeah. goal all year, which is quite unheard of. Uh, oh, there's a missed opportunity. Nice clear by Kempen or feeding by Kempen. So to go this many games and not give up a goal says a lot about that defense. And 
a course for Catherine Took, but a lot of times she looks she, like the Maytag repairman back right. there. She, uh, a lot of times she never touches the ball. She's touched it earlier in this game than she has in most games. So it's just the uh, the Lady Eagles just have not missed a beat this year, uh, losing some key players off last year's graduation, but that seems to happen every year for the boys and girls program. They graduate, they just fill them back up with some other players. Yep, yep, they had a great feeder program, and you know, and what's What's uh, particularly good for Shay Z when they're competing against other MVAC schools is the fact <coughs> that the JV team is able to compete in the CVAC. So you've got young players up here who would otherwise probably be playing JV, but are up here on the team helping out in the varsity level. But you've got this heck of a good squad that played Northeastern to a 0-0 a zero -zero tie last night uh, playing at the JV level. Yeah, that, and that, I mean, that says a lot for the the JV program, like you said, because, I mean, Northeastern has a quality program itself, being a bigger school. And, uh, you know, whenever the two schools play like that, a bigger school and a smaller school, the bigger school has nothing to gain, uh, and the smaller school always does. You know, if they lose, they can say, well, we lost to a bigger school. Right. So, so you got the bragging rights. So. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, yeah. but it's... Uh, but it's like you say, like the girls just prior to this game, the modified girls just won over at the other field, the old varsity field, 7 nothing against the Elizabethtown modified. And like you said, some of those players on this varsity can play modified right now, and all the JV players, 20 of them, could be playing modified too. Right, well, unless they happen to be sophomores, then... Uh, well, then right, or yeah. as least the ninth graders of yeah. the group. Right. Yeah. So. But most, most if not all of the other MVAC schools don't have a JV program. So Jay Z is very lucky that, in the fact that Seton Catholic uh, doesn't have enough numbers to have a boys or girls JV squad. In fact, that's where Joe Pusson is tonight. He's up at Plattsburgh High School. Okay. So I was wondering where Joe was, and there's a nice uh, corner here by Kempinen, and it comes all the way through. Come and Bushy, Alexis uh, Bushy on the far sideline tried to come in to get the ball, and it's cleared out and it will work its way out of bounds and it goes off of the Lions defense. So some good effort here by the Lady Eagles trying to, uh, if they win this game, I think it's pretty much a lock for them uh, winning the division again this year because I if, don't see any other team, maybe they might lose a game, but I don't see them losing two. It would be a major upset if, uh, if they were to lose one to somebody other than Elizabethtown. Right, I mean, this is their chief rival, and, and you would expect a good game, a close game. And, and down in Elizabethtown, it was a, a good close game. Uh, Shazy came out on the uh, winning end of that, but it wasn't uh, a runaway by any stretch of the imagination. And there's a clear, and uh, the goalie, Ashline, is there, so she'll work her way to the 18. If you're just joining us, it's a big MVAC matchup tonight between Elizabethtown Lewis Lions and the Eagles of Shazy, and it's right now on the offensive attack. It is the Lions, and there's a through ball, but Hack does a nice job to shield her away and push it to the outside. So nice defensive play by Lindsay Hack, and she now clears it up toward midfield. It's controlled by the Lions, and nice uh, pass. And so a nice ball movement here by the Lions, but it's intercepted by Caitlin Lapeer, she works her way into midfield, passes it into Elizabethtown Lewis territory, and Bushy pushes it up over to, it looks like Chelsea Gay. And it is Gay trying to get it across. And there's a shot by Kempinen, and coming off the line, oh, a nice try by Amber Polomsky, and it goes off of Ashline, so a corner kick for Shea Z. And as I was saying, Calvin Castine, the father of Hometown Cables, on the camera. I'm Joey Trombley calling the action. We have about 30 minutes here left in the first half. So the first 10 minutes, there is no score. And it'll be Kempinen setting up for a corner kick here on the near sideline. Kempinen spins the ball, and it goes right into the hands of Ashline. So she'll work her way to the 18, and we are only... 40 seconds from the 30 minute mark here so we were close and it's controlled by the Lions. Nice move by the, it looks like by uh, Kasava, Kylie Kasava pushing it up trying to find number 15 Whalen and there's Megan Reynolds and there's Calvin there's no doubt in my mind that when the all-star selections come out Megan Reynolds I'd be stunned if did not get one of those all-star selections. Well there are surprises every time and when you get a, a team like Shay Z they they uh, can't, can't give an all-star nod to everybody. <laughs> so they've got to honor the other schools, recognize the other schools. So sometimes a deserving player gets left out just because 
they try to be fair to other schools. Right, and of course last year that happened too. Uh, we know Joe and I were pretty vocal about that uh, because the defense wasn't even acknowledged last year, and that last year's team gave like three goals for the whole season. So that was kind of <laughs> well, teach them to give up those three goals. Yeah, well, you know, if they were only not giving those goals up, yeah. they might have uh, realized those awards. But you know, they let their guard down three times and. It doesn't get you any hardware. No, no. So it, I hope I, I hope the viewers know we're saying this facetiously. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but the fact that uh, you know other schools will. It's just like the Major League Baseball All Star Game. There's somebody from every team, so there's you know there's other players that probably should make it that don't make it because you know, you want to have every team there, so oh, fans right. from all the clubs. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, and I understand that. And. You know, and and it would be nice to, uh, you know, you take a player that's not having a, a good season. It's nice that they get recognized uh, for their efforts, uh, even though their team didn't have a good season. Individually, they did well, so right. that makes sense. And then we have the eighth grade of Hannah Lauren coming in, who could be playing modified. <laughs> I think she's happier here. Oh yeah, much happier here. And there's a nice, another nice feed here on the corner. And uh, if you look up there, Calvin, all the players of Elizabeth Town were in the box. Yeah. So, so uh, it looks like the strategy is let's pack it in, and it, we we kind of see that a lot up here uh, as during these Shazy games, is that they seem to pack it in. They play for a break, hoping to keep the score low. Yeah. But you don't one nothing or two nothing is still a loss. That's right. But they want to avoid the six, seven, eight, ten. <laughs> Which is capable, or capable. Which we have witnessed. <laughs> uh, yeah, many, at many times over. Alexa Skate did a nice job heading the ball over to Kempinen. I mean, and there's another perennial all-star, and it's Oshry Kempinen's, oh, there's a height. This could be dangerous. And it goes on top of the net, and that was Kirsten Dorn. And Kempinen, this, I mean, she's been here a senior. It's like her fifth season on the varsity. Yeah. And she's a perennial all-star. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know. Sometimes you look at these kids and you say they're still in school. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at their birth certificate? Yeah. Of course, you know, I, I, I hadn't heard it recently, but it was a, I had to laugh. I, a couple years ago, I heard that Shazy go, goes and they recruit players. I thought, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. When, uh, when they got over 300 kids in the community <laughs> playing, and I'm not quite sure why we go recruit players, but, but you know, how rumors start. and. It makes for good conversation. Yeah, well, how do they uh, get him into the school district? <laughs> they got free housing for him or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we let him into the residence, the old minor residence <laughs> off the school. Yeah, if you had... In the tunnels. Yeah, it, well, exactly, you know. Nobody knows that, that you know. We may have to have you edit that off this Yeah, one. yeah, yeah we don't the secret's want. out. The secret's out, yeah. The, uh, we recruit him and put him in the tunnels. But it's 26-47 here to go here in the first half. We have no score. Shazy is leading on the corner kicks, but surprisingly, as much as they've dominated the midfield, they've only had one true shot on net, according to the scoreboard. And so it is a tightly contested game, as well as it was down in Elizabethtown. It'll be Shazy for the throw-in far sideline, and it works it down to Hannah Lauren. Lauren, the eighth grader, having her debut. I think she had a hat trick against Scroon Lake here. I think you were here for that game. And uh, what a debut for Hannah Lauren on her opening uh, night in the varsity. Yeah, I mean, there's a kid that has to come off the bench now because Shazy has so many <coughs> good starters. And, you know, she uh, had a hat trick in her first game. I mean, she obviously is good enough to be playing for everybody. And just that Shazy's got to find room for her off the bench. So she'll still get a lot of playing time. Sure. But, well, she's young. And you, and you look at the girls' program, you go look at the boys' program this year, and they're having another successful season. You look at that second group, the reality is they'd probably be starting for other teams in the MVAC and maybe even for some CVAC teams, but because there is such a strong talent pool, unfortunately they're uh, on the bench as a, uh, a reserves. Yeah, we'll never know where the uh, second team would finish if they were a separate team in the league. They would probably beat um, a majority of the clubs out there I'm sure I would think so I mean I don't know if it would be it'd be one and two but they would they'd be up there yeah. um, I think they'd have a winning record oh yeah there's there's no doubt in my mind about that right, girls, ship, ship. and you know and that and that's tough for those players who know they got skill and talent and you know they aren't starting but um, 
but they also know their role and they're ready when they do come off the bench and uh, both coaches are very good about that uh, moving players around and then when the game does get out of hand if it does get out of hand then they bring the the, uh, the reserves in give them some time yeah and, then, and you have to yeah you got it you know they they come to all those practices they spend just as many hours out there as the, as the starters do and uh, you know they deserve some playing time whenever it's possible Absolutely, and, and I think both coaches do a tremendous job with that. I know Karen does here, uh, very good about, or she'll move players in different positions, uh, trying to mix it up a bit. Well, you never know when you're going to get a, an injury to a key player, and all of a sudden you're going to need somebody in that position. Yeah, who doesn't get the, their eyes like deers and like seeing a deer in headlights right. because they haven't been out there yet. They got to feel comfortable in their skin out there, right. and uh, giving them playing time does allow that. But right now, it is a tight game here at the George Brenler Field on a beautiful, beautiful fall night uh, on the 5th of October. And here's Amber Polomsky, and she's got some good speed, some nice skill. And then yet, there you saw five Willsboro or E-Town Lewis players go collapse in that box. And uh, so Shazy, they're going to have to try to not get frustrated uh, with the, the defensive ploy here by the, the uh And, and what they're going to have to do is what Joe Poisson preaches when he's up here is play their position, stay wide. Right now they're not spread out completely. You know, just stay wide, give the uh, person somebody to kick to in the corner to switch fields to. Don't play just half of the the width of the field. Play the entire width of the field. Right, and you control that. You control the uh, midfield doing that. You control the play of the game doing that. And a nice rip by Hack on the far sideline, and uh, it will be a goal kick here for the uh, the Lions of Elizabethtown Lewis. We're at 23 minutes. We still have no score. The coach for Shazy is Coach Karen Trombley. This is her third year at the helm, and then we have Coach Denton, Steve Denton for Elizabethtown Lewis, and. Uh, Karen, you know, she came into a very strong program, but she has definitely kept it going as she's made it to two Final Fours in her first two years here. Yes. And impressive. I mean, they lost in the finals one nothing last year, and they lost in overtime the year before. So the last couple years, when Shazy does lose a game, it's not by they got totally outplayed. It, it really is a close game and really could go either way. And there's a nice hustle by number 19, Coates. And it's taken away by Reynolds. And she switches fields, does a nice job going up to find it is number 16, um, number 14. It's 14, uh, Chelsea Gay. So Chelsea Gay working away to midfield. And she's trying to find Lauren, picked up by Doran. Doran now finds Lauren. Lauren trying to control. And one thing I, I noticed about the girls here, and I even saw a lot at the modified game earlier. Shazy's always looking for that one touch. Touch it, pass. Short passes, keeping it on the ground. And that's, that's their, their style of play. And it works well for them. And it's Gay with the ball. Chelsea Gay does a nice job pushing it up, trying to find Lauren. And it's cleared out to midfield. Coming over is Hack. And she just lets it go out of bounds. It'll be a throw in. And we have substitutions coming in. So we have Jessica Lauren coming in on the defensive end. Uh, we have Caitlin Lapierre coming in, and we also have Christina Emery. Polomsky comes off, Lauren comes off, and Hack comes off. Right, we should point out that you know, <coughs> we're expecting a good game here, not a blowout, and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, Hometown Cable is here. There's uh, Sable Valley visiting Northeastern Clinton right now at, at Northeastern. That's not happening in boys' soccer. That's not being covered. And the Plattsburgh High School... Hornets are playing volleyball against the Cougars at Northeastern. So, so you had choices. I had choices, and I uh, make decisions. And uh, uh, on Friday, instead of being here for the Shattagay Boys games, I'm going to be at Northeastern covering volleyball. It's just going to be one place or another, and uh, that's well, where I'll be at that particular time. How is uh, how is uh, Sam doing? I know he did he have that hip replaced yet. Uh, he's not sure if it's a hip. They're still trying to figure out what. Uh, it's giving them the, the leg pain and the hip pain and so on. So, uh, but I do know that for you, it, it's a big loss not having him well, here yeah. carrying games. But right now, uh, Joe Poisson probably doesn't know it, but uh, Rick Knowles from Plattsburgh.com is taping his uh, game at PHS. Oh, really? Yeah. Now he's with who? 
Plattsburgh.com, Rick Knowles. Uh, Rick did a lot of work for us back in the early 90s. And so he just decided does to, the to cover this game? Racing with his brother yeah, Rob right, yeah. And, yeah. And he does yeah. radio, too, for Wiry. Yeah. Well, does he a works. hockey game with, uh, with Ducky Drake. He does soccer, too, with uh, Tom Brindell. Yeah. This, you know, this is Rick, not Rob. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm thinking of Rob. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are they so, brothers? Yeah. Okay. So did he just offer to do this for you? No, he's doing it for Plattsburgh.com. They, they like to do some stuff, too, on their oh, okay. own. Well, so. here's an opportunity, and took nice play, a nice opportunity here by the Lions. Nice offensive effort. Took does a nice job going down to the ground to save that. And I want to give due to the proper player out there. Calvin, I can't pick up the number. I'm not sure if you can. Was it the blonde or what? Uh, the, no, the brunette right here. Right here. She's walking up. I don't know if you can zero in on that oh, number. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like they all have yellow here, but uh, she has a uh, ponytail. Yeah, I see her, but I can't get a number. She's Oh, and here's Emery, and she just can't get to the ball, and Ashline gets to the ball. It would be Emily Morris. So, of course, the Morris, that name is pretty popular for soccer in Elizabethtown. Yeah. Lewis. Yeah. As you make sure, I always make sure I throw the Lewis in there. Throw Lewis in there. Because that's not fair to Lewis if we're only right. talking about Elizabethtown. That's right. So, we have 18.50 here, and the shots on net are 3-1, to one, Shay -Z. They were quite the couple, though, Lewis and Elizabeth. Elizabeth, they were quite the couple back then. Well, you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the ball is cleared into the uh, Elizabethtown Lewis end, and uh, run toward the ball is Caitlin Lapierre, and it's cleared up a nice job defensively by number 15, uh, Lily Whalen. And the throw in comes in quickly to uh, Emery, and she takes, it, she takes it off of Decker. So another throw in, and Kinnan Latchmore, another eighth grader, who could be playing modified, is on the varsity level, threw that ball in. Kinnan does a nice job saving it. She pushes it up over to Doran, Doran controls. Now she sends it up over to Gay. Gay has the ball. Nice play by Gay. 14 is Chelsea Gay. She sends it into the open space, trying to find Lapierre, and that goes off the end line, so it will be a goal kick here for the Lions of Elizabethtown. And we're about halfway through, because you can see the officials switching sides here, which they do at the 20-minute mark. So needless to say, we're, but they're a little late at 17.46. Well, they wait for an opportunity where they don't slow down the game. So sometimes they end up not switching because the opportunity doesn't come till too late in the half and it doesn't make any sense to switch. Right. Well, they take turns of listening to the coach on this side or listening to the fans on the other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it depends what game it is, but who you rather listen to at times. I much prefer uh, being on the coach's side than I, the fans' I would think side. So. I would think so. As a recorder, I prefer. Oh, as a recorder, yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of bleeps when you're on the other side. Yes. And I, I know that I watched some of your uh, the Ernie Softball. Ware Memorial Championships the last couple of days, and uh, I know there were a couple blip blips in there. Yeah. Enthusiastic. The players are a little enthusiastic. Well, it used to be that uh, when I first started doing it, they would be taking the Lord's name in vain. Now it's uh, people using our favorite word all the time. You know, it's just it's part of their everyday vocabulary. <laughs> And uh, particularly the fans in West Plattsburgh, it's just uh, oh, that's terrible out there. Huh? It's so who I didn't see who won. the samples won it or was it Davison's again or uh, Garso? Well, right? you'll have to go to the website and find out. Uh, samples won. It, it was two nothing in the final game, and then I, I I think I went to the football game last night. <laughs> but it was it, I watched it was two nothing. So what they won that final game by? I can't remember that. Okay, <laughs> go, go, go to where to see it? Or, yeah. well, HometownCableNetwork.com or Plattsburgh.com. Plattsburgh.com. So what we did was we gave you a teaser. Samples, you said they won, but I think you're teasing me on this one. So you got to go and watch it. Um, well, it depends what year you're talking about. This year is Samples, last year it was Garcelos. Well, they kind of go back and forth, isn't it? Yeah. The, uh, Every once in a while, Herb Perrell's uh, Albert oh, Beaver sneak in there. but not, not very often. I, you know, Calvin, going back in time, but that was my, uh, that's where I learned how to play softball back with the Armstrongs. On Sunday League? Sunday League. That's where it all started. And uh, I remember Mad Dog Castan saying, those players from Perry's Mills, they're, they're what, what he, he called us, um, we were disciplined with the basics. You know, not a lot of superstars, but we knew what we to do. We knew the basics. So we were with the basics. So you knew Ernie Weir then? No, Ernie. No? Ernie had just passed before I got involved. Oh, okay. But it had only been it hadn't been there that long, I don't think. Well, how many years has it been now? I can't remember when when Ernie left. 
But I mean, that league is almost as big as the West Plattsburgh League. Oh, definitely. You know, it, it's uh, it's huge, and it's it's been around a long time. And, and the other thing that it just totally reminds me of the Davison's boys' father, Bernie, who played into his 50s and 60s. These guys are like living legends in the softball field. <laughs> Jerry, Randy, and, and uh, Jimmy. Yeah, they're still and playing. They're, oh, they're still playing. And of course, you see Mike Richards out there too. And Mike was a, a, a former Perry's Miller, still is. Now there's a shot, and Doran rips it wide. So Mike Richards, I played ball with him many years ago. They're still playing. And uh, it's actually kind of neat to see. <laughs> Well, you can see some of those old games too there if you. Yeah, I know. I, I go back. I just uh, dug out a. Uh, a <laughs> can you get one uh, that we win? <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah, I've got a couple of those. Okay. Uh, dug out a Barcombs TV one from '84 with the guy Juno and McGee filling on. Oh yeah, that was Barcombs one. That was before the West Plattsburgh <laughs> or the semi uh, It wasn't Barcombs one because Frenchie wasn't pitching, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, well Barcombs two. <laughs> yeah. So we, we would have been the third uh, <laughs> generation generation of Barcombs players. But, uh, well, we have 14 minutes here, and I know we've been bantering here, but you've been able to see the game on the camera. We still have no score. Uh, Shazy is uh, in the shot category, leads 3 to 1, corner kicks 4 0. And uh, the whistle favors the uh, Lions of Elizabethtown Lewis and the fan base for Elizabethtown like that call. And uh, getting ready to check into the game is Crystal Grady. She's ready to check in here for the Lions. And Kempman sending it, trying to get a through ball to Gay. A nice job defensively here by the Lions. So Shazy is into a game tonight. I mean, they aren't walking away like they yeah, have been the yeah, other teams, yeah. which is good to see. Yeah, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they knew coming in that they, <coughs> they would be playing a game tonight and not just waltzing through. No. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, they did know that. Yeah. And I mean, anytime you have Elizabethtown, Lewis, and Shazy getting together, that circled on the calendar, everybody looks forward to the event. You know, not a bad fan base tonight, good crowd. And then, of course, you got the uh, famous Mickey Fries, and, and Mickey himself is here cooking them. Oh, well, that's because Joe's not here, so Mickey came. Oh, well, here comes Caitlin Lapeer. And one thing I, I, I remember one time on the radio, and you were covering the game too, is Joe gave Caitlin Lapeer the, uh, the nickname, the Lion uh, Slayer. <laughs> and uh, she had a hat trick that game, and they had no answer for her. Tonight they are containing her pretty well, and you know it's just a matter of time, I guess. We'll see if she scores or not. But we are 12 minutes here left in the first half on a tie game, and here she goes right now. And there's a shot, a nice save, and oh, on the outside of her foot, it looked like Emery as Ashline made the save, the rebound came off, and Emery did a nice job taking it off the outside of her foot. <laughs> and boy, she's having, well, she liked that one back. She, but it was a nice did, effort. Yeah, she didn't need to kick it that hard. That was a, when you get there, I guess you just want to kill it. And well, you know what it looked like to me? She tried over, I didn't like she overdid it. She just tried to get her outside of her foot on it, and I don't know if the angle of the foot or whatever, but that ball just shot over the net. And uh, she's gonna dream about that one tonight, Calvin. <laughs> yeah. But it was a nice try. It was a very nice a try. Very nice try by Christina Emery. And uh, as they can say, the Lions dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> so we have Harwood, Claire Harwood, taking the throw in here for the Lions. And nice job. The ball headed up uh, by Alexis Gay. And it goes to Emery's foot, and she chips it back to Caitlin Lapier. Lapeer with the ball, heals it back to Emery. Emery goes back to Lapeer. So nice ball movement between the Lady Eagles here. It's cleared out of bounds. So throw in here for the Eagles. And it's Kenan Latchamore. And the ball is cleared toward the middle of the field. And uh, it's number four, Chelsea Gay, fighting for the ball. It goes over the head of Lapeer. And there's Emery. And Emery has been in a lot of these plays here since she's come into the game. And it comes back to Dorn, Kirsten Dorn, letting a shot rip. It hits the defense. And now she has the left foot off. And it just goes over the net. In soccer, it's nothing. In football, it'll be three points. Yep. But we still stay scoreless on the scoreboard here as we approach the 10 minute mark. So 30 minutes, basically, you played Calvin and no score. A little surprising. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that uh, there can't be a lot of goals scored <coughs> in the 50 minutes remaining. But uh, right now, yeah, it's a little surprising that nothing's 
across. So each team's had a, a pretty good opportunity. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice play by Kempton, looking to get a left foot off. She does. And it's right at Ashline, and she's there. So Ashline's doing a nice job here for the, uh, the Lady Lions tonight. And, you know, Calvin, I guess I can look at last night's <laughs> football game. At halftime, it was 7-6 for the uh, Patriots. And uh, they end up winning the game 41 to, uh, or they're down 7 6, and they win 41 14. So a uh, second half can be much different than the first half. Uh, yep. That it can. There's a nice kick toward the box, and Reynolds heads it back out. And now it's uh, Dorn. She chips it up toward midfield. So nice job by the Lady Eagles clearing the ball out, and Caitlin Lapeer hustling for the ball. And it's Lapierre being guarded by number four, Jessica McGinn. She gets it by McGinn, and it goes off the foot of the defense of Elizabethtown. Throw and comes quickly to Caitlin Lapierre. And Lapierre tries to go through the legs, does a nice job into the box right now. Pushing it back over to Gay, knocked away, picked up by Kempinen. Now picked up by Gay. And Gay is called for a handball. So a free kick coming up here for the... Uh, Lady Lions with 8.54 to go here in the first half. Shazy have out, has outshot Elizabethtown Lewis 7 to 1. Corner kicks the lead in that category 4 to 0. And it is Lapeer. She chips up Emery. Emery with some open space. Emery working her way into the box. Emery is there and does a nice job trying to get to her right foot. She sends it across over to Gay. Gay trying to get a shot off left foot. And she just goes wide left. So Shazy is getting some opportunities here, but just haven't been able to find the back of the net yet. And the goal kick by the goalie Ashline for the Lions. You took your eye off. It was the, uh, the other girl that took the kick. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, I saw her set it up. Yeah. And then you're giving me the wave. Oh, and that might be a foul on Lapeer. And I think Denny. Labarge, he's not given a card on that. The Elizabethtown Lewis Lions faithful across the way thought it should have been a card, and she was more aggressively going after the ball. And that ball will work its way out of bounds. And it is Kempinen. Ball is pushed back over to. Um, Reynolds, and you hear the coaches talking down below. Coach Trombley said if that was intentional, she would have taken uh, her player out. And the coach says, absolutely. He goes, if it was intentional, you would have heard me scream. <laughs> so, you know, both coaches know it was a good, hard play, aggressive play, but nothing dirty at all. Well, that's why Dennis Labarge didn't give her a card. Right. And, I mean, so I guess everybody knew it except the faithful of the Lewis Town Lewis Lions. Or <laughs> Ashline, who was there suffering. Or Ashline, who's suffering. But you can, and here's Kempin, and she can get that shot off. And she just goes up over the upper right side. And, uh, you know, when you're there as a fan, you're there emotionally watching the game. You know, which is normal. That's right. Yeah. And you see the things that happen against your team, but you don't see the things that happen against the other side. Oh, never, just... never, never. <laughs> I know you and I have never been guilty of that <laughs> when, we, when, we, when we were playing sports in our days. <laughs> so we've had a very entertaining game here tonight on the 5th of October 2010 at the George Brenler Field. I'm Joey Trombley calling the action tonight. My guy on my right of me here who I'm bantering with for this game is it's not Joe Poisson. It's the father of hometown cable himself, Calvin Castine. And we have a nice crowd tonight. We have the Mickey fries going. We have the snack shack going. So it's just, and plus, it's like 60 degrees out for an October day. Yeah. You can't beat that. Nope. And the field is in impeccable shape. Okay. Let's play two. What's that? Let's play two. Yeah, it almost makes you want to go out. But I do know if I go out, then two games. Two oh, games. Not, oh. not also. Oh, I was going to say. TWO. Well, what I was, what I was, what I was going to say is if that was the case, you want to make sure there's a couple of EMTs around <laughs> because I can almost guarantee you we'd have to call for their service. And Elizabethtown, they've done a, a really nice job of shutting down the offensive firepower of Shay Z tonight. Uh, they boxed it in. It's working for them. And to, if they go into the halftime with a 0-0 tie, or even obviously a 1-0 lead, that says a lot for them. 
for what they've done in the first half. Oh, definitely. It's like last night when uh, Corey Thompson's uh, team uh, took Northeastern to a shutout tie in overtime, and his team came off the field. He was he was, he was very very happy. You know, it, it, he, uh, he knew it wasn't a win, but he was very happy that here we had a they had a shutout uh, tie against the Northeastern. Now, you you filmed that game last night. Yes. Now, did Northeastern outplay Shazy, or was it evenly played? Well, it was, it was, I'd say it's evenly played. Okay. So it wasn't like Shazy dodged the bullet and no, no, no. we're lucky to get out of there with a 0-0 no, well, tie. Their, their goalie really did a nice job. Uh, Shazy's goalie? Yeah. And the ball is at midfield and Dorn pushes it to the open field. Nice job by Dorn getting it over to Chelsea Gay. Gay working far sideline. She tries to chip it back over. It looks like Megan Reynolds and Reynolds gets the shot off. So... Coach Trombley has brought Megan Reynolds back to the midfield center mid and moved back into the sweeper position, Alexis Gay. So that shows you the uh, confidence that Coach Trombley has in her players because a sweeper is a very key position in soccer. And that shows the faith that she has in uh, number five, Alexis Gay, to, uh, and who is only a, uh, I mean, Alexis is, she's only a sophomore. But then, of course, Megan Reynolds is what, a uh, sophomore, too? <laughs> so, they're both sophomores. Better than, better than sophomore. Well, let me just double check this. i got to look across here. Yeah, Megan's a sophomore, too, as well as Alexis. And, Calvin, I want to thank you very much. I mean, as Calvin and Joe always say, I'm the Ted Baxter of this announcing gig that I do here. And, uh, sure enough, I show up just as the game starts. And... Calvin went down and got the schedule, the lineup, and it wasn't in numerical order, and he sat down and, and put this in numerical order to make my life a little bit easier. So, Calvin, thank you for doing that. You are a true professional. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true true, true <laughs> words are never spoken. <laughs> my God, you sound like Bill O'Reilly. There's a lot of confidence. There's a shot. Oh, over the net. So, Kempenin gets a shot off, but it just goes over the net. And... Uh, you know, I was sitting there watching you last night. Uh, well, I didn't watch it personally, but watching it on uh, hometown cable. And I'm thinking, in the early years, didn't you have it on your shoulder? Oh, yeah, until I went to the uh, mini digital that has this <coughs> little side viewer. It was also on my shoulder. And, I don't know how you did that. Uh, I did that till about, uh, I think, the end of 2004. So you did it up to 2004? Yeah. But I would not have been able to continue to do it because my shoulders were freezing up. I couldn't uh, raise my arm. But, uh, Jeez, I wonder why. Hair. I wonder why. Uh, so it came just at the right time because after years and years of, you know, sometimes, is, you know, if I did uh, playoffs in the basketball, I'd be there for mm -hmm. it a, about a 36-hour period. I'd maybe tape eight games. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just, I mean, I was watching, I mean, again, watching the film of it, and it was, I was just going to think that you had that on your shoulder all those times. Now, do they have it set up? Well, even if they had it on a pod, you still couldn't, you couldn't without the side. Was, uh, without the side view, little TV screen on the side to look at, it just wouldn't happen. So right. You'd have to look through the lens viewer, and that just doesn't uh, doesn't look. <laughs> you can't do that when you're standing far There's away. There's a shot, and oh, it hits the feet. Oh, and it's cleared out. And again, the Lions dodge one there. <laughs> So this first half is winding down. We're under two minutes to go here at the George Brendler Field. It almost, Calvin, almost feels like a late August night out here tonight. Yes, yes. And <laughs> except that late August this year was very hot. So it doesn't well, by a typical <laughs> late August night. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember those first two nights. They were with the, uh, we were sweating up here with the humidity and the uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. It was a, uh, it was a hot one. And Lapierre trying to get on the board here with time winding down. <coughs> and the time is coming down, Calvin. Can she get it off? That's the question. And Kempinen looking to set up. They've got to be down into the 30-second mark. I can't see the clock right now. Kempinen chips it up. And it's headed out. And nice job defensively, the Lions. And they clear it. And we're down to 20 seconds. And Jessica Lauren, nice job, pushes it to the far sideline. 
trying to find Alexis Bushy. You know, it will work its way out. So the first half is going to come to an end here. We don't have a score here at the George Brendler Field. Shazy has outshot the uh, Elizabethtown Lewis Lion uh, Lady Eagles 12 to 1. But the halftime has come to an end 0 0. That's, I would say, a victory for Elizabethtown. And uh, we'll be back for the second half. And we're ready to start the second half here at the George Brenler Field. The first half was a 0-0 tie. Shazy dominated with 12 shots to one, but the one shot that Elizabeth Town had, Calvin, it was a breakaway, uh, a semi-breakaway, I should say. Yep, and took guess right and made a heck of a nice stop. And uh, by making that stop, she has still preserved the perfect season of not giving up goals so far. But of course, that can obviously change here in the next 39 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, the ball is in the Elizabethtown Lewis territory. Lapierre pushes it back over to Kempinen. And almost every telecast, I say, as I like to say, Kempinen is the field general out there for the Eagles at the midfield. And there's the kick by Latchamore. It goes off the defense and it's cleared out. So nice job defensively here by the Lions. And now at midfield into Shazy territory, it is controlled by the Lions. And again, I love to give these ladies their due, but I just can't pick up the black lettering on the dark green uniform. So if we can catch their number, we'll, we'll give them the due here on Hometown Cable. If not, that's the reason why. And it's a throw in here for the uh, Lady Eagles. and. Official Labarge did push it back about 15 yards, which they did. And the ball is now at midfield. And on the far side, fighting for the ball very hard was Chelsea Gay. And it's knocked out of bounds. So throw in, it's Lindsay Hack at midfield. She gets the throw in, and she gets it up over to Gay. Gay looking to try to control. Does a nice job of getting by one player to two. Now she gets it over to Lapeer. Lapeer with the ball. Defensively, they're setting up a spot. She goes to the open space over to number 16, Bushy. Left foot shot by Bushy, and it bounces right into the hands of Kirsten Ashline. And she's done a nice job there for the uh, Lady Lions tonight, keeping the uh, game scoreless here. I'm Joey Trombley calling the action, and here comes the Lady Lions with some speed. And they are playing for that break, and they do have some nice speed. And there's a shot that goes off of Hack. Looks like it went off her face and it deflects over to uh, Took. So, or it might be Megan Reynolds actually. It went off Reynolds' face. And she's just walking back. And it is the 5th of October, a beautiful night here at the George Brenler Field. And um, former coach Duman was up here at the break talking to you. And I guess there are some legendary coaches above the way, <laughs> across the way. Yes, they got their own little corner up there, I guess. George Brenler and uh, Tom Tregan. And Joe uh, Dumoulin, my former classmate at St. Mary's, uh, up there, and uh, they're coaching from up there. Yeah, yeah I heard uh, Coach Dumoulin say that uh, they all talk about the would and could if they were down here, and uh, don't we all do that? <laughs> it's part of the fun, whether you're watching uh, baseball or football or whatever. You know? Everybody's a coach when they're watching the game. <laughs> you should have should have done this, should have done that. One thing a coach will always, they don't hear, but it's always said behind their back, you, they should have, could have. <laughs> yep. yep. Always being second guessed. Yeah, and at the, at the professional level, the, those reporters are all over them if it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What and. What are you thinking? <laughs> Well, Doran lets the ball go through uh, to the foot of uh, Alexis Gay, and it's cleared back defensively, and Reynolds comes up, and she sends it right up over to Kempinen. Kempinen trying to control. It's knocked back into Shazy territory, off the head of number five Alexis uh, Gay, onto the foot of Latchmore. She sends it down to the open space, trying to find Caitlin Lapierre, and nice job keeping it in. And uh, it is Bushy uh, taking it off. Alexis Bushy taking it off the E-Town player. And she's trying to find a number 14, Chelsea Gay. And it's picked up by number two for Elizabethtown, Kylie Casava. And Calvin, it's a lot easier when they're 10 yards from us up here this side than on the other side to pick up some names. And it is Kempinen with the ball. She'll switch fields. She goes all the way over to Lindsay Hack. And Hack with the ball, working her way toward the middle, gives it up back over to Kempinen. Kempinen 
Has one player in front of her. Goes to the open space trying to find Bushy just a little too far ahead of her. And it's knocked away by the defense of Elizabethtown. Cleared toward midfield. It goes off of uh, Alexis Gay. Gay's got some space. And it's Gay still with the ball. And they both go down. She's working hard. And um, if you didn't know, Alexis Gay is a hockey player. So she has that tenacity, as Joe likes to say. And she just keeps it going. And now it's onto the foot of uh, number 16, uh, not 16, but number 14, uh, Chelsea Gay. And Alexis Bushy sends it all the way over. And it is a goal kick. So Shazy couldn't save it. Coming into the game is Crystal Grady for the Lions. There's a nice kick, knocked by Kempen and trying to get it up over to uh, Gay. And it's cleared out toward midfield and Hack comes over and it's taken away from Hack. And now into Shazy territory, but nice speed on Hack, running back on the ball. She slips, but she's back up. And she does a nice job sticking the ball away. It goes out of bounds, so she disrupts the flow of play here, giving the defense a chance to get back settled. And the throw-in comes in and it's Hack trying to get to the ball. Reynolds comes over. And it's cleared out by Kempinen, but it's headed back toward the 18. Cleared out by Reynolds onto the foot of Caitlin Lapier. And Lapier just gets by her back into Shazy territory. So some good end to end action right here at the George Bremer Field. We still have no score with 34 minutes left here in the second half. A very key matchup here. If you're just joining us, I said this in the beginning of the telecast. Shazy is undefeated at 9 and 0, and Elizabethtown comes into this game with an 8 and 1 record. So their only loss is to the Lady Eagles. They lost to them at the Lions Den 2 to nothing earlier this year, about a few weeks ago. So if, if Shazy wins this game, they're pretty much going to guarantee themselves uh, another division title. If they talk they'll be if they lose this game they'll be tied and uh, anything can happen so the uh, weak kick goes into the hands of Ashline and uh, Calvin as the game windows down it stays 0-0 zero, zero. more confidence that the Lions pick up by keeping the game at this uh, scoreless uh, tie well definitely definitely and just one little break at the right time can make the, the whole ball game and we saw that in the first half they had the break they didn't score a nice play by Took to make the save, but uh, that's all it takes is one breakaway. You, know, you talked about their rivalry here. When I first started taping uh, Shazy Sports, uh, Shazy and Elizabethtown would meet at Seton Catholic for a double header, girls and boys, and that place would be just jam packed. And uh, they got away from it because it became too much of an event. Really? And, I, I didn't realize and, that. Uh, this is dangerous. And what a play by Ashline. You had the Lion Slayer, Caitlin Lapier, coming in hard. And a heads up play by Kirsten Ashline to come off her line. And uh, very heads up play by the goalie. Yep. Yeah. And uh, she, was, uh, she was down. She got the. Uh a shin or so uh, against her shoulders and she kept on going. Well, and going back to what you said earlier, I didn't realize they stopped because it was such a big event. It was just, you know, the kids are starting to take it a little too serious oh, and, okay. you know, and... Uh, she was getting out of hand that way. Yeah, and, you know, they'd look forward to it all year and it just became, you know, the focal point. And, you know, the rivalry's there and by itself without... Uh, <laughs> yeah, adding fuel to the fire. Yeah, and plus, uh, they'd usually do it late in the year so they'd end up uh, playing them, then uh, a week or so later, they'd be playing them again. And of course, each time they play, it mattered because right. they were probably close in the standings. Right. And you have Latchmore come in trying to get it up over to uh, Bushy. She does. Alexis Bushy getting the shot off, and it goes wide right. So you can see some frustrations on the Lady Eagles right now. Um, they're working hard, but they just cannot find the back of the net. They still have 31 minutes to do it. They're still 0-0, but they are 31 minutes away from this game, basically technically going into overtime with no score at this point. Shazy has outshot the uh, Lady Lions 13-1, and the corner kicks are 5-0 favoring Shazy, and they probably control most of the midfield. And there it is, and it was Caitlin Lapier busting through the defense. And you know it had to be a matter of time, Calvin, before the Lion Slayer, Caitlin Lapier, found the back of the net. The Ash Lions stood no chance. And at the 30 minute 56 second mark, Shazy goes up 1-0. 
Well, I think it should probably be Lion Tamer. I mean, uh, Slayer just sounds... That's not politically correct. Uh, I was going to say Lion so Killer, but that was that's, that's very devastating. Next, no. Lion so, Tamer. Lion Tamer. Yeah. So in this PC world, that's what we should say. That's right. That's but you don't I'm think surprised like, that Joe Pustin would do that. I you don't think Lion? You don't think Lion Slayer is a little more softer? No. 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 All right. No. This I, is your. This I am is, shocked that Joe Pustin will come up with something like that. Yeah, well, he did. He did. he said Lion Killer, I think. Yeah. And uh, I am shocked. Now I'd have to go back and replay the tape, but it was <laughs> it was something to that uh, that extent. If he would show up, I guess he's. I think his presence is at the stadium right now, but he has not come over here, and uh, I think he's just hanging over by the Mickey Fries. I think so. He, he's over there chomping on Mickey Fries. His game is over. He uh, text messaged you? or Yeah, he was 10 minutes away. I think the message to 12 minutes. I think we went to halftime when I checked it, and uh, I did text him earlier to see if he was in the house, and... As you can guess, he ignored my text because uh, he probably has a burger in one hand yeah. and fries in the other. Yeah, he ain't gonna have the room for his phone. No, and then if he grabs it, so much grease on it, he can't do what he has to do anyway. But you know, Joe's very selective in what games he does and doesn't do. Yeah, you know? oh yeah. Well, yeah, he's a coach, you he, know. He can afford to be though. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, he doesn't get paid if he's not here. <laughs> That's right. Oh, actually, he doesn't get paid if he is here. That's either, right. Okay, so, well. So either way. So either way. So a big goal by Caitlin Lapierre. Now we're under the 30 minute mark. And what's impressive right now is Shazy still putting the pressure on. They're not relying on that one nothing lead, which is what you need to do with a team uh, like uh, with Elizabeth Town. Oh, they're not used to scoring one goal either. <laughs> no, no, they want to put more in the back of that net. But this, uh, you know, as everybody knows, just takes the emphasis off strictly defense for uh, Elizabeth Town Lewis now because They've got to put something in in the net. Well, they they got to open it up if they obviously if they want to try to get a goal here. So, and of course, when you open it up, you leave yourself open yeah. to the the counterattacks by the Lady Eagles, which they can score in bunches. Yep. So, E Town Lewis wants to make sure that they can uh, play an offense without uh, sacrificing their defense. And we'll see if they can play that to form, but they are playing a juggernaut, I guess I'm saying the right word, defense for the uh, the Lady uh, e Eagles because they just don't give up goals, at least not this year they haven't given up any goals. Not yet. But I wish, you know, it's, it's better for them if they do give up a few during the season because you figure somebody's going to score on them. Well, yeah, and, yeah, if they, that, I mean, and if that goal comes, the first goal in the game, and they find themselves behind for the first time. It, that's right. Yeah, when come playoffs or if yeah. you go into the regional play or state play, I, I mean, when they when if if they get to that point, you're playing teams of equal caliber. Right. And that was they very well know. Uh, is the Shazy still number one ranked in the state? They're number one ranked. The boys are number one ranked. Um, and matter of fact, they're ranked ahead of uh, Arkport, who won it last year. And uh, when I was looking at the schedule or the the standings. I'm thinking maybe Arkport has a tie in there, and that's why they dropped to number two because they are the defending champions. And uh, but you still have them one and two this year, at least state rankings for whatever whatever that means. Right. You know, it doesn't mean anything that you play the game, but uh, obviously they got a, a very quality program down there, and uh, you're almost at the state level. That's almost becoming a rivalry now between the the ladies of Shazy and the uh, Blue Jays of Arkport. Where is Arkport? Uh, somewhere in the state. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I do know their their school name is the Blue Jays. Uh, what section they're from? I have no idea. Oh, nice pass. Oh, and Lapierre tried to one-time it. She almost had time where she could have trapped it and then got the shot off. Uh, she got to use that left foot a little bit, I think. Well, she tried. <laughs> I think she tried to do it with her right foot. The ball was going in the other direction. Well, I know she tried kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> we got to replay the film and see what she, what foot that was. And you know, again, talking about Karen Trombley, now she moves Ken and Latchmore back in the defensive position, and we have an injury right now, and we'll be back in a moment.
As uh, most people know, for years the uh, Green family has been providing uh, apples to all the uh, visiting teams that come here and uh, to the home team also. And uh, from Drew, from the Shazy Orchards, and it looks like the Drew family is going to keep on that tradition. The Drew family now owns a uh, Shazy Orchard and Drew's Poultry. And uh, Joe Trombley, Joey Trombley, has decided to uh, have a Macintosh during that uh, injury timeout. So he's finishing his Big Mac attack. That'd be a corner kick, plus one off Grady. Reynolds is moving up from the back line to uh, put herself in scoring position. We're down to 25-53 in the second half. one nothing. Shazy leads. Ball's in front of the net. And sent back in, but over the top. Well, Calvin, I'm back from that uh, Macintosh attack, as I heard you saying on the camera. What you didn't say was how fresh, crispy, and juicy they were. So, for the uh, folks listening, if you get an appetite for a nice, fresh Macintosh apple, you can go right to Shazy Orchards, and the sales room is open every day. They sell them by the bag. They sell them by the... You can even uh, bag your own if you want. You can even bag your own. They have different varieties. And uh, during that break, we had some time there. And I saw that big bag of Macintosh down there. And it's just, <laughs> it is that season where you just want to have one. And so I had one. And it was, uh, and Calvin, I would suggest you have one when we're done. Because it was very, very good. Well, it's nice. It's, they bring those out. And uh, they, were, they had an app, fresh apples right up to June of this year. Because they keep them in their freezer back there. And, uh, or they're not their freezer, but they're cooler. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be apple season to enjoy it. They taste almost as good uh, year-round. Oh, there's there's no doubt about it. But, you know, it's like in August you get the the bug for fresh corn on the cob, and it's just a seasonal thing, and it was it was really good. And I think it's really nice that the uh, Giroux family has kept up the tradition. It's really nice that they give a bag of apples to the uh, visiting team, and I think they do appreciate it. It's better than giving them a dozen eggs probably. Yeah, well, I mean, they'd be harder to eat on the bus ride, but you can. I know Rocky had two or three fresh ones there during uh, Rocky. Although th there have been some teams here that left this area with eggs uh, heading in their direction. That was years ago, though. Oh, my God. You're talking many years ago. That's when soccer was a different game <laughs> than it's played today. <laughs> Is that fair to say? Yes. <laughs> Back then it was kick it and boy get out of my way because I'm going for that ball. <laughs> and uh, good thing the buses are yellow because they, <laughs> they got a little extra yellow on the way out. <laughs> As we know those days have are long gone. And good riddance to them Joey. Yes. Yes. That, that wasn't during my era Calvin. No, it had to be no, during no. yours. <laughs> I heard you good Catholic boys were a little out of control if you lost oh, a, a That game. was St. Mary's. I'm talking about here at Shay Z. Yeah. Oh Shay Z. Okay. The, um, you know, I, but I, you know, going on a more serious note, I think with the playing soccer year round, with the internet, with Facebook, with instant messaging, messenger, these players know each other, and so you don't have, I don't think you have a rivalry, but it's not the intensity that it used to be. Oh yeah, it, a lot of them uh, play in the same teams uh, different times of the year. You know, it's just, uh, but yeah, they realize that. Uh, it's a sport, and uh, in most cases, they're not taking it uh, <laughs> at a personal level where years ago it was, it was more so. You, you well, know. I mean, back when I was going through school, I mean, you had dial up. I mean, you dialed your phone. I mean, that's what you did. So you heard about a lot of these other players, what you read in the paper and stuff, and, and that's kind of where you got your news from. So those big games would build up because you said, oh, I got to see who this player, you know, this player. You didn't know, know who they were until you got out there and played right. for the first right. time. So, I mean, it's, it's much, much different. Um, you know, you talk to the referees, the officials down there, and they'll tell you it's a much more enjoyable game to call nowadays because it's a much more skilled game than it was 20 years ago. Oh, definitely, definitely. 
Yeah, very seldom do you see a game get out of hand physically. It happens, but not. Well, I mean, look, we did the we did the men's soccer finals this year at the air base, and what did the officials say? It's like they used yeah. to be you give out five yellow cards and uh, maybe a red card, and now it's you're calling offsides and uh, you know accidental pushes or something right. like that. So Shazy leading one to nothing. A very close game. Uh, we have 21-12 to go here in the second half. And it is uh, Alexis Gay on the far sideline trying to get it to hack. And it goes out of bounds off of the Lions. So hack will take the throw in. Nice throw in by Lindsey Hack. It works its way into Lion territory. And now we, I think we had some wholesale changes out there too. If I'm not mistaken, while we were bantering back and forth. And another throw in here for the uh, Lady Eagles. And it goes on to the uh, foot of Dorn. Dorn serves it in toward the top of the, uh, just outside the box. Alexis Bushy trying to get to it. And nice job by Crystal Grady. She knocks it out of bounds. And it's a throw in number one, or 21, Kenan Latchmore, trying to find Amber Polomsky. And there is a handball. And it's a handball on, was that number eight, Calvin? So number eight. Um, Ray is called for the handball, and it looks like it looks like Sam. I'm assuming it's Samantha Ray, but you have Sam. That's what they had, Sam. Okay, so Sam Ray. Reynolds serves it in, coming off the line is the goalie, and offsides. Now she she had to be offsides when the the kick took place because once she kicks it, you can break the line. So I'm assuming that um, uh, Alexis Bushy was ahead of the line, and um, I guess in football you call that you're in the neutral zone or something like that. <laughs> Encroachment or whatever they call it. I'm a little surprised that ball was still in the air. I mean, it could have, still could have gone in off the kick. And if you're not, you know, I don't know if you're a part of the play, if the ball goes in and, you know, maybe by just being there you're part of the play. Yeah, I... I but they know what they're doing, yeah. And they're very good. They're very good officials here tonight. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just wondering. That's all. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. It's more of a wonder thing, yeah. The uh, that's that's the point I was trying to get. We aren't knocking the, the officials. They, they they do a wonderful job out there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful job. And we say that 95% of the time up here. <laughs> On camera. On camera. And 18.35, the officials switch fields again, and we have Denny LaBarge next to us. Mr. Jim Schutz works his way across the field, and the ball works its way into Shazy territory, and Reynolds just one times it back into E-Town territory, so it'll be a throw in here for the Lady Lions. And the ball is at midfield, and it's going back and forth into each other's territory here, so uh, Shazy will now clear it up. There's nobody there except the E-Town defense, E-Town Lewis defense, and it's coming to the near sideline, and Kenan Latchmore, nice speed. Kenan Latchmore turning on the afterburners, and uh, she's still with the ball, and she chips it up. It will go off the end line. So good effort by Kenan Latchmore, and defensively it was a nice uh, job by Jennifer McGinn to stay with her. So we have 17.40 to go here in the game. Shazy with a 1-0 lead. It was a low-scoring game at the Lions then. It's a, a low-scoring game here at the George Brendler Field. And uh, only one loss separates these teams as of tonight. Of course, that could change in the uh, final 17 minutes with Shazy with a 1-0 lead, the Eagles with a 1-0 lead. But if Elizabethtown can come back and tie, or, or not tie, but win this game, they'll be even record-wise with Shazy. So then you could be looking at a tiebreaker or playing a special game to see who wins. But if Shazy wins this game, they'll have a two-game lead. And uh, like Calvin and I said earlier, they get a two-game lead in the division. It would be pretty much academic at that point. It would be a major surprise if they did lose it. And Doran looking to get a shot off. She gets a low shot off. And uh, Ashline is there. And Ashline's done a nice job for the Lions tonight. Yep, yep. She's made some nice plays. Nothing spectacular, but... 
the goalies make all the plays they should make, they're doing a good job. Absolutely. Whatever has been called for her, she's doing. And that would be a, a push on uh, Gay. There's a nice feed. The ball is headed toward the, the wing. And it is knocked out of bounds, so goal kick for Shay Z. So nice opportunity there by the uh, Lady Lions. And Caitlin Coates getting ready to check into the game here for the uh, Lions. We now have 16 minutes to go here. Side. Yeah, well, I think that's the uh, the call for more Mickey fries. <coughs> and Polomsky, nice speed. It's Polomsky. She has Lauren in front of her, and she sends a long kick wide right. And Grady checking back into the game. And we're back to the action here on the goal kick. It's off Kempinen's foot. And Alexis Bushy with the ball. Serves it up over off the head of Polomsky. And it's on the far side. And nice hustle by Emery. And it's knocked out of bounds by the Lion defense. So Christina Emery with the throw in. She gets it over to Kirsten Dorn. Dorn, long shot, and that will work its way, oh, almost into the cornfield, but it hit the top of the fence and comes back to Kirsten Ashline, so she'll set up for the uh, goal kick, and she sets it up, and her defense kicks it. Good. I know I made that mistake earlier. As we have 14.24 to go here left in the game, it is the 5th of October. Instead of saying second half, you said in the game. That means you just a shortest of overtime. I said left in the game. Right. It's left in the second half. If it goes to overtime, there's more than 14 minutes left in the game. So maybe I'm being optimistic that the girls are going to win. <laughs> maybe you are. <laughs> I, I didn't think that way, but that's... <laughs> I'm just... In the second half, we'll... Uh, but that's what I like I the... Learned, I learned long ago, and I... Not say in the game? Not to That's say in true, the game. Yeah, go, yeah, you're right. In the second half. Unless it's 5 nothing, then then I can say in the game. But. Yeah. Then I will pull that off the table and I'll say in the second half. There you go. We have 13.33 to go here in the second half. The ball is in the Shazy uh, defensive end. And Polomsky trying to work her way up. A nice job defensively by the Lady Lions. And it is Kempinen. Kempton having some nice defense on number 13, doing a nice job. It is Cannabush, and the ball is back in the midfield, and it's Latchmore. She'll control it. She'll look, and she pushes up, trying to find Polomsky. Polomsky open space. Nice job over to Bushy. So nice pass work here by the Lady Eagles, and Bushy gets it across, and Ashline was there on the on-rushing Hannah Lauren. And she quickly punts the ball to the far sideline. Ball is headed into Shazy territory. And it's Dorn pushes it back over to Reynolds. Reynolds one times it back into Elizabethtown Lewis territory. And it's kicked quickly back into Shazy territory. And it goes out of bounds. So throw in for Shazy right at midfield, far sideline. And Kempinen will control. It's Kempinen with some space. Now makes her turn, working her way toward the net, working her way toward the 18. Kempinen threw ball over to Polomsky. Polomsky looking to get a shot off. Polomsky gets a shot off. Nice, low, hard shot. Excellent shot and equally a great save by Ashline. It goes off the end line, so it's a corner kick. So coming back into the game for the Lady Eagles is Caitlin Lapierre as well as Chelsea Gay. So Amber Polomsky had an opportunity there, and she just, just missed it. 18 for E-Town. And 18 for E-Town is going into the game, and that would be Decker. And there's a nice serve. 
and it goes right into the hands of Ashline. And again, he didn't say any spectacular saves, but that one was a spectacular save by Ashline. And here's a breakaway they're looking for. And it's Hack. Hack, she gets by Hack, and here's a shot. And it goes wide of the net, and the Lions are playing for that breakaway. They almost had it, but there was equally excellent speed by Lindsay Hack to disrupt the uh, Kylie Casava. And when she finally got the shot off, it was a weak shot wide of the net. That was a strong shot, but it was wide. That was, well, <laughs> that was a little oomph to it. A little bit, but the, the, angle. Pre the preservation of the shutout is still there. But you gotta you gotta tip your hat off to Kasvah for their speed, but equally the hustle of Lindsay Hack to get back there to disrupt Kylie Kasvah. And Latchmore chips it up. Bushy trying to chip it to Lapeer. Lapeer controlling. And Lapeer. Well. Yo, know, Alexis Gay is hurt, and we have a break in the action. Well, we're back from the... She stayed out there, Calvin. I'm surprised that they allowed her to, to stay out there because there was no the, blood. Co the coach didn't come on the field, and she came to the coach. So but the coach yeah. comes on the field, and she's supposed to come out. The clock has stopped. But... Uh, she went to the coach, and the coach from the sidelines looked at her nose. But. Eagle! 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 And all right. Eagle well, Kempton will take the uh, corner kick. They're all yelling eagle, so it's a set corner kick play, which is probably a short corner kick. Go, go, go! And she gives up over to Latchmore. Latchmore pushes it back. Oh, trying to find Kempinen. Kempinen does a nice job pushing him back over to, there's a shot. And Lapeer trying to get her left foot on it. Nice job by Grady to take it away from Lapeer. But now it's Emery getting a shot off, and nice job by Emery. So we have 9-18 to go. Shazy leading Elizabethtown Lewis at 1-0 in a very entertaining game tonight, to say the least, Calvin. Yeah, if you're a soccer fan, you have to enjoy this one, uh, no matter which side you're rooting for. I mean, we've done a, our share of games up here where they've been lopsided and not very interesting. Well, this is the reason I chose to come here when I weighed out all the other options. I said, well, I've got to get that volleyball, but I'll get them on Friday and cover this one because this is the rivalry, and it looked like it was going to be a good game. And I know you had a question mark on Thursday's encounter with Westport. And uh, have you decided what you're going to do on Wednesday, or Thursday, I mean? Uh, right now I'm leaning toward coming here rather than drive all the way to Ellenburg. I drove all the way there last Friday to find out there was no game after I uh, emailed and asked <laughs> if there was going to be one. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah. Half on the far sideline has it taken away, and there's a kick up. So Took, you know, doesn't get a lot of action at, back there, but she knows what they're trying to do, so she comes off her line to take away that breakaway, and nice job by Catherine Took. I'm sure she gets most of her experience in practice, and not, <laughs> not in the game, you know. Yeah, she's got to uh, learn during the practices of what to do out there. She, she doesn't get that many opportunities to make mistakes. Well, right now the shots are 18-2, to two, and the two shots that the Lions have have come on breakaways. Right. So we have 7.40, so as the clock winds down, the intensity of the game will pick up, only being a one-goal game with these two rivals here tonight. And um, actually, the Lady Eagles in MVAC action, their only loss on this field has been to the Lady Lions. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. I didn't know that. No. Well, you know, again, wealth of information, Calvin. And again, this is what I'm, you get. I'm going to assume you know what you're talking about. But this is what you get on hometown cable. Now I'm talking MVAC. They have lost to some CVAC teams, but in the MVAC, their only loss has been to their chief rival. And you know, again, another reason to watch hometown cable because you get that inside knowledge that you don't see anywhere else. Yeah, where else would you find that out? <laughs> exactly. I mean, you might try to go on the internet to figure it out. Well, that's hometown cable. Yeah, that's hometown cable. Yeah. 
And you go to the archive of games and watch them. <laughs> Every game, yeah. You have to watch them all just you have to, to see. Watch them all, but it's worth, you know, 72 hours of your time to figure that out. Or you can get it right here live. Well, live to us. Yeah. Well, to the viewer, just within 24 hours on the internet, yep. normally. So Shazy trying to get it out of their end. And the Eagle or the Lions have picking up their intensity here as we figured they would as the game approaches to the end. So it'll be a throw in for Grady. No, Grady won't take the throw in. She'll let uh, Sam Roy take the throw in. And it just gets by Morris. Bushy does a nice job heading, trying it by Grady. And it's Bushy over to, to Lapeer. Lapeer controlling. Nice play by Lapeer. Now the open space. Bushy heading toward the ball. And it's chipped up back to midfield off of Latchmore over to Kempinen. Kempinen's got space. She just pushes it back over to uh, Alexis Gay. Gay now into Lion territory. Trying to push it through. Trying to find somebody. And it goes on to the foot of Morris. And now it's cleared out to midfield, picked up by Lapeer. And Lapeer pushes it over to number six, Emery. And Emery gives it to Chelsea Gay. Back to Emery. Back over to Chelsea Gay. Gay does a nice job getting by one defender, now working away toward the 18, just outside it. Gets a shot off. And. Coming off is the goalie Ash line. And Lapeer was going at it. It looks like they knocked knees together. Or it might be her hand. Lapeer's knee got her hand, but Ash line's a tough goalie back there, and she shakes everybody off and she gets the kickoff. But Steve Schutz, or Jim Schutz, wants to uh, check things out here. Uh, the coach wasn't called onto the field. He just wandered out there while time was called. And I'm not sure what the refs, the refs are conferring. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, the rule is if the coach is called onto the field on an injury, then the player has to come out until the next whistle. So we'll see what uh, they rule here. I'm sure that's what Jim Schutz and uh, Dennis LaBarge are are chatting about. So they are converting. Now what happens if he runs out there? If he is called on the field for an injury, then the player has to come out. The injured player has to come out until the next But if he's not called and he goes out? Well, that's, he's not, he, still he shouldn't to, have gone out. <laughs> so what happens? Well, we're about to find out. Let's see what Karen, if Karen insists on it. I think Karen will, Karen will say that's fine. Ref's going to say, okay. If she's going to say, okay, then I don't think either ref wants to push it. And you can understand he's a concerned coach for his player, and he's just going out to make sure she's okay. And I'm sure he wasn't thinking of the rule, obviously. That's what he's paid to do. I think because of what happened prior. Yeah, Karen went out to her player. Well, she didn't go out. She didn't step on the field. No. The player came over to her, which is the same results as her going on the field. But uh, she did not cross the, the line. She can walk over there. The player can walk over. She's injured. The clock has stopped because of the injury. So she still can't walk over to her coach? No, no. They stop, you know, clock stoppages are very rare in soccer, as you know. And right. If you stop that clock for an injury, the purpose is to take care of that injury. And if the player is able to walk, then uh, they should be walking off the field or staying on the field. And uh, she walked over to her coach, and Karen said, uh, your, your nose looks fine. I don't think it's broke. And she stayed in the game. So... Uh, the refs, I would have, as a referee, 
said she had to come out because she conferred with the coach. Right, okay. It's interesting, though, how things can develop in a game like this. And uh, good sportsmanship on Coach Trombley. And, uh, you know, and, and Coach Denton appreciates what Coach Trombley allowed because you could hear the uh, the officials down there conversing. Well, yeah, but uh, I think <laughs> because without that prior incident, uh, the refs may not have worried about whether she wanted to allow it or not. And again, Ashline does a nice job with 2.57 to go here. It's one nothing Shazy. The reality is it's one nothing because of uh, Kirsten Ashline. She's done what she's had to do, but the one spectacular save was on Amber Polanski, a low hard shot. She made a great save, which could have made it 2 nothing. And um, so Shazy is 2 minutes and 38 seconds away from possibly uh, guaranteeing themselves another division title, uh, at least not officially, but I, I think uh, realistically. And Joey Trombley's head. Well, I'm just going from past experience, just calling these games and looking at the different teams out there. You, you make a calculated, educated guess. <laughs> That's all it is. Yes, so the Yankees uh, had it wrapped up <laughs> a month and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, but you see, now, now, see now, here's, here's a rumor mill. Then they they wanted to lose so they could play Minnesota the first round. Oh, I see. That, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah but right. Makes a lot of sense, right? Right. They wanted to not have a home field advantage. <laughs> and, of course, I know you're a big Yankee fan. I am big and I'm a Yankee fan, yes. And uh, <laughs> okay, you, So you say. The, uh, and, you know, Calvin does not speak lies, so... <laughs> The, uh, so you think they're going to get by Minnesota? <laughs> the only consolation is Minnesota's been stinking up the place just as much as <laughs> the Yankees have. <coughs> so they both aren't going to, in the, the playoffs on a, on a roll here, but that can turn around. Well, we're at minute 20 here left. And another shot, and that is shot number 20 on the game for the Eagles. Two shots for the Lions, and... Uh, you know, one thing if you're a coach, you hate to see your team get 20 shots off and only score one. And, of course, that would be cause of concern moving on deeper into the playoffs and regionals. Yes. And the thing is, Shazy does have the horses to score, and I don't, I mean that figuratively. Uh, they have the talent to uh, put that ball in the back of the net. And... Uh, you know, I, I hats off to the Lions of uh, Elizabethtown because in two games they've played very, very tough. They've they'll have come up on the short end of the stick at least in game one. They're 30 seconds away from coming up on the short end of the stick in this game, but they've done a really nice job. And there's a, that's dangerous, and uh, she caught it. Her back foot went in, but the ball didn't cross the line. And you had Jim Schutz there, and he saw it that way. So another nice job by Kirsten Ashland on a dangerous shot by Oshry Kempinen. A shorter so, keeper would not have gotten that one. No, no that would have been in the, in, the, in the net, there's no doubt. So Shazy will win this game one to nothing here at the George Brendler Field. A big victory for the Lady Eagles. In their minds, they might be disappointed they only scored one goal, but a victory is a victory. A W is a W. A right? W is a W, and uh, they extend their streak to 10-0, and, and the uh, streak of not giving up a goal is now extended for another game and uh, it is the 5th of October 2010 it was a beautiful night for a soccer game here in Shazy Calvin Castine the father of hometown cable was on the camera I'm Joey Trombley calling the game and as Calvin likes to say that's the way it was in beautiful downtown Shazy